This morning I want to share with you the story, a uh, portion of the story of Jesus' birth as told in the Gospel of Matthew, which focuses uh, on Joseph. Luke tells us about Mary, Matthew tells us about Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he'd resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus, the gospel of our Lord. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Just a couple of weeks ago, Helen Johnson, a 47-year-old mother and grandmother, walked into an Alabama Dollar General store to buy some eggs. She took all the money she had, $1.25, which she thought would be enough to buy a carton of eggs. Her family, which includes her two daughters, a niece, and two young grandchildren, live on welfare. The most recent check had gotten lost in the mail and a disability check, which was due to arrive in a few days. But in the meantime, they'd run out of food, and they hadn't eaten in two days. Helen picked up the carton of eggs at the Dollar General store and realized she was 50 cents short. So she quickly placed five eggs into her pockets and made her way toward the store exit. An employee watched what she did, uh, called the police, and then stopped her as she uh, approached the exit. A Tarrant, Alabama police officer, William Stacy, arrived and took her to his squad car. The officer said he'd already talked to uh, Dollar General officials, and they said they weren't going to press charges. And he then ordered the woman to remain there by the squad car while he went back into the store. Moments later, Officer Stacy emerged from the store carrying a carton of eggs, which he handed to Helen. She started crying, became very emotional, and was very apologetic. She tried to give the officer her dollar twenty-five, but he insisted that she keep it. When asked what she could do to repay him, Officer Stacy simply asked her to never shoplift again. And then Helen asked if she could hug him, and he said yes, and there the two of them hugged in the middle of the parking lot of the Dollar General store. The story doesn't end there, however. Stacy and another officer later stopped by Helen's home, which again surprised her and made her a bit nervous following the shoplifting incident. In their squad car, they took her to the police headquarters where they signed her up for the annual community Christmas toy drive and also connected her with a food and clothing collection that was being coordinated there as well. And not only that, when Officer Stacy and Helen Johnson had shared that hug in the dollar store parking lot, a bystander took a video of what he saw took place and then posted it on the internet where it quickly went viral. And by week's end, Helen Johnson's home was stuffed with food donated by people from all across the nation. Helen Johnson said that her life is forever changed because of the actions of Officer Story and the Tarrant Police Department. My heart, she said, is wide open now. What an incredible gift these police officers gave to Helen Johnson, a gift of love and caring, a gift that made a difference 
in the life of that woman. In this encounter between these two in Alabama, I can't help but see reflections of the Christmas message we celebrate this season. God entered into our poverty and helplessness to give us hope for tomorrow. God entered into our dysfunction and our brokenness to bring healing and help. God entered into our desperation and our loneliness to love us and comfort us, and indeed to open our hearts wide. On that first Christmas, God gave us, God gave to you and me the greatest gift that God could give us. And in the simplest way possible, here's how I would describe what God did for us that first Christmas. God wrapped himself up in the form of a little baby and gave himself to the world in the person of Jesus Christ. Just for a moment, forget about Christmas gifts and Christmas trees and Christmas Parties, forget about all the tinsel and and glitter and gaudiness of the season. Forget about Santa Claus and Scrooge and Grinch and, and Frosty. And think of what God did on that first Christmas. God wrapped himself up in the form of a little baby and gave himself to us, to you and me, in the person of Jesus Christ. In the gospel this morning, an angel visits Joseph to reassure him that his now pregnant fiance really is bearing a special child within her womb. The angel appears to him in a dream and says, don't be afraid, Joseph, this child has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And then the angel gives further instructions to Joseph. First, the angel says, you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. A couple of things to note about the name Jesus. First, in those days, it was about as common a name as Bill or or Bob or Larry. Now, can you imagine today singing, Larry, 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 there's just something about that name. Larry Rumler really liked that at the first service. He thought that was a good idea. But I think it is significant that Joseph is given explicit instructions to give this special and holy child a common name, a name that will not distinguish him or set him apart from the rest of humanity. Given that, the name of Jesus does have a very important and profound meaning because Jesus means God saves or God helps or God is salvation. You shall name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus was born. Jesus came to us so that we, you and I, might be saved from our sins, from our brokenness, from our helplessness. The angel goes on to tell Joseph that there will be another name by which this child will be known, a name that was prophesied by Isaiah. He shall be called Emmanuel. What does this name mean? Quite simply, God is with us. Perhaps we should say that together. God is with us. You see, God wasn't just sending anybody into our world to save us and help us. In the person of Jesus Christ, God himself enters our world to save us. In the person of Jesus Christ, God lowers himself to our level. As as that hymn in Philippians so beautifully says, though he was in the form of God, he didn't regard equality with God as something to be taken advantage of, but he emptied himself and took the form of a servant and was born in human likeness. In Jesus, we experience the presence and reality of God in a way that the world had never before known. There is a theological word for this, and perhaps you've heard it before. Incarnation. Incarnation. What does incarnation mean? It simply means to become flesh, to appear in flesh and blood as a human being. John's Gospel puts it this way, the Word became flesh and lived among us. And John makes it clear that this Word he speaks of is a unique expression of God Himself. God became flesh and lived among us. My brothers and sisters, can you capture just a bit of the profound importance of this holiday we're celebrating. It isn't just about feeling warm and fuzzy about a cute little baby born in unfortunate circumstances long ago. No, it's about the Almighty taking a tremendous risk and coming down to live among us, even to be born as a vulnerable little baby and placed in the hands of an ordinary peasant couple from the backwoods of Galilee. 
Someone has expressed it this way. The Christ child was born right into the center of everyday and ordinary life. Holy splendor shining incarnate upon a very human face and life. That's the real story of Christmas. At Christmas, God literally wrapped himself up in the form of a baby and gave himself as the best gift to this world. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is the amazing gift of God's presence with us in the person of Jesus Christ. God himself comes to save us. Queen Victoria ruled over the British Empire for 60 plus years during the 19th century. This was a time, of course, when the British monarch was almost godlike and held a a great deal of power and prestige. The story is told that one day Victoria learned that one of her field workers, a common laborer, had lost her baby. Having lost a child of her own, Victoria could empathize very well with what this young mother was was feeling. In fact, Queen Victoria felt so moved by compassion for this young mother that she left her palace and went to the cottage where this peasant family lived, something totally unheard of for a queen to enter the home of a poor commoner. Upon being invited into the home of this grieving mother, Queen Victoria spent most of that day consoling her. After the queen left that evening, the neighbors came over and excitedly asked, What did the queen say to you? And the mother said, nothing. She simply held my hand in her own, and we wept together. My brothers and sisters, at that first Christmas, God himself left his throne to enter into our ordinary human existence, to help us, to save us, to heal us, I would say to hold our hand, as he offers us his grace and mercy and hope. At that first Christmas, God wrapped himself up in the form of a little baby and gave himself to the world in Jesus Christ. I love what Barbara Brown Taylor says about the meaning of incarnation. She's an Episcopal priest and author, and I've shared this with you before. She suggests that the incarnation is God's way of saying this. I am so crazy in love with you that I will come all the way to where you are to be flesh of your flesh, bone of your bone. I will do it all. And all you have to do is believe me that I love you. I love you enough to become one of you and I love you to death. Let me ask, are you needing God's help or God's salvation? Are you wondering how God could possibly understand what you're going through? Are you longing for God's peace, God's presence, God's purpose in your life? Do you even maybe need God to hold on to your hand as you experience the trauma of life, as you face loss? If so, then please hear this. God has an incredible and amazing Christmas gift for you doesn't require batteries, no assembly is required. In fact, it is the best gift you'll ever receive in your whole lifetime. And it is the same gift that God shared on that first Christmas. It is the gift of Emmanuel. The gift of God's saving, life-giving presence in us and among us through the person of Jesus Christ. My friends, during this busy, often stressful and emotional holiday season, do not forget that God is with you. And through the Christ child of Bethlehem, God says, I love you enough to become one of you. And I love you to death. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the gift of Emmanuel, your presence among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to receive the gifts of love, hope, and salvation that you make possible through him. And as we celebrate his birth, may we each know deep inside of us the best news of all, that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.